What is a scientific fact that absolutely blows your mind? When you dream, one portion of your brain creates the story, while another part witnesses the events and is really shocked by the plot twists. Self-entertainment, I like it. It gets even weirder. There's two kinds of dreaming, the watching kind, non-REM, and the doing kind, REM. Each night, you go through three to four of these non-REM and REM sleep cycles. The non-REM sleep is the deeper sleep and the REM is the lighter sleep. So in the watching kind, it's like you're watching a movie. You're passively observing a character your subconscious created going through a situation. For example, you watch a character you created subconsciously go through their first day of high school. After observing it and drawing some conclusions or gaining some insight, you then go into REM sleep and now you're in the one going through their first day at high school. You make the decisions, you feel the emotional responses to what's going on, and your body will have physical reactions like sweating from fear, increase heart rate from exactment, dopamine release from something good happening, etc. So it's like watching a training movie and then getting a chance to do it in a practice dream scenario. I once told my partner that I was disappointed because he woke me up before I found out who the murderer was in my dream and he said that it didn't make any sense because it was me dreaming it so of course I would know how it ended. I feel so justified now. Also that was the best dream I ever had that I can remember. It was a murder mystery musical. I can barely remember any of it now, but I do remember there was a whole musical number about a pony that someone was convincing someone else to let them buy. Approximately 99.85% of all the mass in the solar system is concentrated in the sun. The mass in our solar system is contained within the Sun, Jupiter, and a rounding error. Very true, but even Jupiter could be a rounding error. It's only 0.095330% of the solar system's mass. So, statistically speaking, the Earth and the rest of the solar system, like Finland, don't exist? As a Finn it always catches me off guard reading Finland memes in the strangest of places. If you put one of every animal in a bag and then pick one out you have a 1-5 chance in picking a beetle. And 1-2 chance of picking an insect of any kind. To put it another way, half of all animal species are insects, and 40% of those are beetles. If one could conclude as to the nature of the creator from a study of creation it would appear that God has an inordinate fondness for stars and beetles. Evolutionary biologist J.B.S. Haldane How much empty space there is in atoms. Like how the fuck I'm a solid object, I'll never understand. It's like fishnets, you cannot pass but small stuff can like straws etc. Now apply that scale to the extreme, from microscopic to human to planetary. I just wanted to say I hate you for making me think of my leg like it's a really dense fishnet. Don't forget that since electrons move, your fishnet leg is breaking and fixing itself constantly. The size of animals still blows my mind. You can read about how a manta ray is 23 feet long and 3 tons but it doesn't really hit you until you realize that's heavier than most cars. So I live in Hawaii and I'm going night snorkeling with anta rays on my honeymoon in a couple of weeks. I can't wait. Also it's whale season now so the humpback are here. And I mean you know whales are massive but they are mind-bogglingly massive in person. It's a whole nother thing seeing an animal the length two buses and weighing in at 30 tons launch itself completely out of the water is an awe-inspiring display or power. Just got back from a week long in Kauai. Saw two whale mamas teaching their babies to swim, and from far away I thought the babies were adults. Then I saw mom's tails and fins and holy shit. Sharks are older than trees. Also, trees almost killed all land life on earth as there used to be nothing that could decompose them so dead trees covered the ground and killed all other vegetation. Only once fungus evolved did trees start decomposing. That said, the lack of decomposing fungi, which use up oxygen in the decomposition process, and the extremely high number of photosynthesizing plants lead to very high oxygen levels during this period, as high as 15% higher than modern levels. This allowed the insects of the time to grow to massive sizes. Insects have a fairly inefficient respiratory system, so without high oxygen levels it's difficult for them to grow to large sizes. Now you might be asking how large, well, dragonflies were the size of hawks, spiders were the size of house cats and millipedes were as long as 8 feet. Truly a fascinating point in our planet's history. If two pieces of the same type of metal touch in space, 
they will bond and be permanently stuck together. Space welding, cold welding. It makes sense when you understand why it happens. I forgot most stuff including my name, but it has to do with free space and metal atoms that allow them to bond with each other. It does not happen normally on Earth because all sorts of other atoms get in the way. This is interesting and all but now I want to hear more about your amnesia. I don't think they remember that they had amnesia. I don't think they remember that they had amnesia. I recently read about the split brain experiments. There is a procedure for severe epilepsy that involves cutting the connecting nerves of the two brain hemispheres, resulting in the two hemispheres being unable to communicate with each other. The experiment shows that both halves can answer questions independently of each other, have separate opinions preferences, form memories independently, basically suggesting that there are two minds in the brain. That just blows my mind. I remember seeing videos about this in high school biology. Not only what you have said, but also since each hemisphere has different tasks and you cut their connection, a lot of things become different. For example, if they cover your eyes and give you an object you are familiar with, you are not able to identify it only by touch, because there is no communication between the two hemispheres. You have to see the object to be able to fully identify it. Scary shit. To me the most fascinating part is when the experimenters were able to command the non-speaking part of the brain to do an action without informing the speaking part, like hold up a sign that only one I could see that said, take off your shoes. Then they would ask the person why they took off their shoes, and the person would explain it fully convinced that they made the choice to do the action on their own. They would make up some justification for it, like their feet were getting hot. There really is no indication that we actually have any control over our own choices and actions, because even when they are initiated from a third party we remain fully convinced that it was our own decision. We are just observers that think we are in control when we're not. Caterpillars basically dissolve into liquid in the cocoon. The only thing left are the so-called imaginal disks, groups of cells that contain all the information and the mechanism to turn that soup into the various body parts of a butterfly. The same applies for other insects. And apparently they retain memories through this process. Without the development of genuinely sci-fi travel technology like wormholes or hyperspace, which may not even be possible, 99.99 plus percent of the universe will be forever locked off from us. Because of cosmic expansion, the various galactic clusters are moving away from our local cluster faster than we could ever catch up to them. Without these sci-fi drives, 99, 99% of our galaxy will be forever locked off, let alone other galaxies' galactic clusters. All matter literally gives off light, but we can only see a sliver of that spectrum, although we do have tools to help us see other spectrums. Our bodies give off infrared, and are basically glowing in that portion of the spectrum similar to how iron glows to our normal vision when it's heated. Something that sees a different spectrum than us might not see hot iron as glowing at the same temperatures we see iron glow at. I'm so glad you asked. I have a list. Hippos sweat sunscreen, and it's red. Reindeer eyes, normally brown, turn bright blue in winter to see in low light conditions. If the lifespan of the universe was equated to a human life, the entire time that stars will actually be burning is equivalent to the first day after birth. Giraffe necks are actually too short to reach the ground so they have to splay their legs in order to drink water. Because of their kilts and ferocious attitude, the Scots fighting in World War II were given the nickname Ladies from Hell by the Germans. And finally, my personal favorite, there are about four times as many unique ways to shuffle a standard deck of playing cards as there are atoms in the Milky Way. I'm a history guy, so I have lots more fun facts, but these are the ones that I would describe most readily as mind-blowing. Fat cells do not burn or disappear. They just shrink. Tumors can grow teeth and eyes. All of life can be tracked back to a, or several depending on who you ask, continuous billion plus your chemical reaction. If you as a person do not have children, you break a billions of year long lineage that goes back to the beginning of life itself. Okay you want grandkids. I get it mom geez. Some forms of anesthesia don't numb you to pain they make you forget that you felt it. There are no photos of the present. My friend showed me a photo and said, Here's a picture of me when I was younger. Every picture is of you when you were younger. Mitch Hedberg. When you lose weight it leaves on your breath. So when people lose 50 kilograms, they have exhaled that much carbon. 
Echidnas and platypus are the only two animals that lay eggs and also produce milk. This means they are also the only animals that can make their own custard. The knowledge that the atoms of our bodies contain elements only forged in the center of stars, and that such stars upon death blow the elements via supernova across the universe and into our very existence. We are made of star dust. We've never actually seen what the entire Milky Way looks like since we're located inside it. The fact that we are all dead in practical terms for forever. We were not alive for billions of years before birth, and we will be dead for billions of years after death with only a blink of conscious existence in deep time. As Mark Twain put it, I had been dead for billions and billions of years before I was born, and had not suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. The fact that time works different in the universe. The fact that it is faster or slower in some parts of the galaxy just blows my mind. A recently discovered vine can mimic nearby artificial plants, modifying the size, shape, and color of its leaves to match them. The only plausible explanation is that plants can see. What is a scientific fact that absolutely blows your mind? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.